it um, better? Okay. Okay. Let's make a start. Um, hi, my name's George. Um, if you can't hear me or you think I'm speaking too fast, please put your hand up and tell me to slow down. So, um, for those of you who haven't met me, I am a consultant engineer in DevOps, uh, but I have been involved in Joomla for a long time now. Um, I've just finished my term on production, which has lasted somehow for about five years. Um, I was the release lead, deputy release lead for various different Joomla versions, and I'm currently running the releases for Joomla 4. Um, so yeah. Um, if you guys want to find me, I am always contactable. Please feel free to reach out and ask questions. You can find me in all the usual suspect places, email, blip, um, GitHub, feel free to ping me. So, um, Joomla 4. So where we're gonna start is we're gonna talk about um, what everyone talks about, but no one really gets up on a stage and talks about, which is this. So um, everyone likes to show off this graph and talk about how Joomla's dying or dead or whatever have you. Um, and I think it's very unfair. Um, you could always argue that it all kind of went wrong after we started releasing our own code in 2008. Mambo was always the better CMS, clearly. Uh, um, okay, so I want us to think about what we have in Joomla 3, first of all. So in Joomla 3, we have a top-class multi-lang system. We have support for content, categories, tags, versioning, linking all these things with keywords. We have hundreds of configuration options to allow people to customize every little bit of their site. We have a really high quality code base um, and thousands of extensions that sit in um, the extension site, the kind of shining glory of Joomla, so to speak. And all of them have a really, or the majority of them have a really good quality of code. And we also have our responsive backend interface that allows everyone to control all these settings. On top of that really strong code base, we built our own issue tracker to allow people to um, easily submit issues. That's uh, uh, issues.joomla.org for those of you who are new. And most importantly, we have a really strong volunteer community. Like, really, really good. We have people constantly submitting code, constantly making doc edits, involved in marketing, who are involved in all sorts of different areas of Joomla, not just code. And that's something special that very, very few communities in the world have. Most of them need a corporate with a lot of money behind them to get this kind of product out the door. And we should be really proud of what we have there. And for all of Joomla's flaws, you know what? Our market share is still pretty decent. There's a lot of people in the world that would kill to have a near 7% share of the market. So before we start going on about doom and gloom, just remember, we actually have a really good product with a really good community, and it's not something we should be ashamed of. But neither did we get everything in right. And this is where the basis for Joomla 4 starts. No one can ever get everything right all the time, and there's things we can improve. And Joomla 4 is a mission to start trying to improve some of the things. So um, let's think. So some of the things we got wrong we could fix within uh, the Joomla 3 series. For example, our releases were a bit everywhere, really. They just kind of came out when they came out. Sometimes they broke things, sometimes they didn't. So back in 2014, we came up with this development plan for Joomla. We decided that we would release um, minor, major, and patch releases. So major releases would have backwards compatibility breaks in. Um, so like Joomla 1.5 to 2.5, 2.5 to 3, those kinds of things. Uh, minor releases would be feature-based releases, but would ideally not break backwards compatibility. And patch releases would fix bugs, and bugs only. And we'd start releasing monthly on a Tuesday. Um, and we made sure that we started releasing out release candidates a week in advance for everyone's tests so that people had a 
good idea of what was going to come out and could test things ahead of time to make sure that we did not introduce bugs into Joomla. And if you're interested in all this stuff, this is always kept up to date, our roadmap, uh, this URL, and our development plan at this URL. So you can always go back and look at what all our plans and stuff are. So um, if you're thinking about um, a major version of Joomla, sometimes what you have to think about is, um, what's Joomla's target market? Who are we trying to appeal to? And um, so a lot of these, uh, a lot of people came around and started discussing this back in about 2014, 2015. And um, kind of various diagrams floated around. Um, this particular one comes from Path, who was talking about building a sustainable ecosystem for Joomla. Um, and I actually quite like this one because it keeps things very simple. Um, and so Path's argument was that we should be targeting uh, extension developers, um, system integrators who are basically kind of web agencies and individual people who just want to build a site, um, template developers, and kind of consulting agencies for these kind of large scale enterprise projects. Um, and that would all feed back into the CMS ecosystem. Um, so lots of talks happened around this and trying to figure out where Joomla should go, because traditionally when you're building a product, you want to have this kind of niche market, right? But it's really hard with Joomla because we kind of um, specialize when you start to install multiple extensions, but there are so many different extensions, it's really hard to build a marketing base for kind of this kind of base product. So, um, <coughs> marketing goals. So we're kind of trying to build a, a base platform that people can install extensions on in an easy and secure way. Um, <coughs> these extensions should be customizable, extensible, and integrate with each other, which is a lot easier said than done. And site administrators should be able to add content with ease and without needing to pay for large amounts of custom training, which is also important. So that's kind of the high level goals. Whenever we're doing anything with Joomla, these are the things that we're trying to keep in mind. Are we meeting at least one of these three things? So by 2015, a lot of stuff was going on with Joomla 4. Nick had started writing a series of blog posts and during Jab in 2015, a group of us sat down during the Make It Happen session and tried to discuss where Joomla 4 was going. And we literally wrote it down on a small sheet of paper. And this became the vision for Joomla 4. <coughs> Everything starts somewhere. So um, these were a whole bunch of features and version requirements and all kinds of weird things that we all sat down and discussed over like three hours. I can see Robert doing the check sums right now. Yeah, so we've actually done a pretty good job at meeting most of these. There's a handful that we postponed, but the majority of this has actually been done. We did a good job. So trying to put all of this into a slide. So eliminate lots of code that's been dead for the last five years as Juma 3 has gone on and things have changed. Uh, to try and make sure that there's one way of doing things for people who are coming along and wanting to build new extensions for Joomla. Um, trying to make the admin interface more friendly and easy to use. Trying to improve SEO um, to the latest standards and improve our accessibility as well. Uh, standardize our packages on the Joomla framework packages because we were effectively maintaining two lots of code in places, one in the CMS, one in the framework upgrade from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4, because we're behind, and introduce web services. So, 2019, where are we at? So, Joomla is easier to get started with. It's easier to install. We had way too many options, um, and we've cut them out, basically. 
Um, site integrators now get to install Joomla in three steps, and I reckon anybody here could install Joomla now in less than two minutes. Um, I've done it enough times now that I can genuinely do it in about 30 seconds. So, for example, this is step one. It's not hard. Um, so, the installer is um, much simpler, much cleaner, much slicker. And, yeah. So, the other thing we started working on is... Okay, yeah, I forgot I had the GIF. Shh. Admin123, obviously. Much more secure. Ta-da. That's Juma. So, yeah. So the next thing that we started working on as well is the new admin template. So um, this was revealed in Juma Day Florida. Uh, I don't think it's last week anymore, but actually it's now open to people to investigate and play with. But it looks much cleaner, easier to use, and we're trying to give you more information at a glance about your website. Um, and there's some really cool little things that I personally like that I just want to shout out because I like it. So Juma 4 is trying to support the user more. It's trying to have, trying to avoid people asking questions. So for example, one of the things that we always used to get in JSST was multiple emails a week about people who actually were unable to log into their site. Someone wants just to reset their password for them, which obviously we can't do. But it took a lot of time replying to all these emails. So one of the things we've done on the login screen, for example, is just added a simple link, forgot your credentials, which takes us to the long existing docs page. And it's going to be small little things like this that actually make a real difference to our users, trying to make their lives easier. Um, one of the other things where I should point out is that um, these support links here are actually just a module. So that means that if you want to link to your own page so your clients can contact you personally, it's really easy. So, yeah. The other thing is, is that Joomla 4 is much easier for your clients to use. So one of the things was that we, it was sometimes hard to find where you had to go to create your articles and your content and all that kind of thing. So we've actually tried to separate <laughs> out the system administration section into a new area. So um, it's probably a bit small, but hopefully you guys can see that what we've actually got is we've got a new um, system menu item. And we've removed all the traditional things that you needed for content configuration, uh, for, sorry, for your system configuration into this page and removed it from the main menu. So that means if you want to see um, global configuration, language settings, and all the rest of it, you now go here. But that means it's out the way for your clients. They don't have to see this at all. And we've also tried to make it more informational. So as you can see, there's um, either ticks or things you need to fix. So this provides kind of separation for Joomla between, yeah, between content producing people and people who are just going in to administrate your website. Because some of the time, those things are completely different people. So that's kind of trying to separate things out. So what else have we done? We've also tried to make Joomla easier to use for kind of larger corporations. So. Um, in larger teams, there's often the approvals process. And even sometimes in smaller teams, like um, I've worked in startups where everything had to be approved by marketing before it got published, even though that was only one person. And so to try and help kind of enforce this, we've introduced this concept of workflows. So um, instead of having publish and unpublish, you actually have a workflow. So your article might uh, start in draft and then move into a ready-to-review state that only someone that's in the marketing user group in Joomla is able to progress into published. So um, it's reasonably simple. You create um, 
kind of uh, stages for your content to work through. So that's the draft ready to review thing. And then choose what transitions and who's allowed to transition most importantly with permissions. And obviously each of those stages has a uh, published or unpublished setting alongside it. And to make sure that it's easy to use for the existing people, the default set of transitions are exactly the same as what you're used to in Joomla 3 with published, unpublished, and allowing everybody to move between them. But it gives you more flexibility. So um, the other long recurring problem in Joomla is Media Manager. Everybody knows that Media Manager was problematic. So um, it was bad enough that we just decided to rebuild it entirely. Uh, so from the ground up, it's a completely new thing. So yeah. So it now has a much cleaner interface. And um, yeah. So the other cool thing about it is um, the default location of images there is uh, customizable plugins. That means that you guys can build plugins if you want to integrate with cloud. So if you want to go and get your images out of a CDN that's in AWS or Azure or whatever have you, you guys can just install a plugin and add an extra location and just treat it like it was part of Joomla. So um, yeah, the other thing we've also added in is you can now do basic image manipulation inside the interface. So if you want to crop, do basic cropping, rotation, all that kind of thing, you can now do that. That is also plugin driven, which means that if you guys have custom things or you guys want to build extras, you can also do that. And I suspect that we'll see some of these things enter the JED not long after Joomla 4 gets released. And of course, we've made it, we've kept the consistency of the view when you're trying to insert content into your article as well, as you can see here. So yeah, so that is uh, Media Manager. No. Um, there's a lot of talk about how and how to do some of these things and different sizes as well. Um, it's not that we'll never do it, but it's not going to be there in 4.0. But trying to get some of these things done for 4.1 and 4.2 and that kind of thing is definitely on the card still. So. The other thing we've tried to do in Joomla in the front end is try and leave things less to the user and more try and use more native features. Um, so one of the things that I'd like to use as an example for this is CSS Grid. Um, CSS Grid is a really cool little concept. So I'm just going to steal some docs from the official specification to try and demonstrate this to you. So um, in CSS Grid, you basically um, build up um, areas of content, boxes of content. So you can consider this like your um, columns and stuff you have in a conventional website with Bootstrap. But you get to align them and define how they get laid out in CSS. And the cool thing about this is, um, is you can use classes to do this. So you can actually change classes and in your CSS, or in your HTML, sorry, and your CSS will reorder your content into a completely different layout. And also, you can do more fun stuff like this. So here, they've actually using CSS queries to have different um, content layouts, depending whether you're in portrait or landscape mode on your phone. And if you guys want an example of how this might be useful for Joomla, Think about having different layouts of your modules depending on whether you're in portrait or landscape mode on your phone. That's quite a powerful thing if you think about it. So, moving on. The next thing we're going to talk about is trying to make Joomla available. So, in Joomla 4, um, we are trying to our best to make uh, Joomla 4 accessible to the uh, AA Web Content Accessibility Guidelines standard. Um, there is a full statement of intent at this URL. Um, and basically, we are currently in the process of generating reports for what needs to be fixed to make our websites fully accessible 
because we want Joomla to be available to everyone. And even aside from it just being a generally good thing to have, um, there is a reason for this, of course. Governments and some corporates are basically requiring this. Um, and in some countries, it's becoming a legal obligation for everyone. So it's really important that we start to get this happening. Uh, there's a really awesome piece of work being done by the accessibility team. Uh, they're working really hard on this at the moment. Um, so yeah. And making Juno accessible isn't just to me and you and anybody. It's also about making it accessible to the machines. Oops, that's one too many. There we go, web services. So um, Joomla now ships with an API. So that, for now, is just some data out of com content, but it will be all extensions by the time we go stable. Um, and that means that people can um, actually interact with your website from other websites and all that kind of thing. And that makes your content more integratable with the rest of the world. So, uh, where are we time? Yeah, we're good. OK, so the other thing that we've started working on is um, a CLI interface. And the reason for that is, is that in a lot of countries, um, especially ones with strong startup scenes, we're seeing Joomla being used as a CMS with um, some sort of tech innovation on the side. And there's just a nice, simple CMS for a blog area for your marketing people, and then, or and a bit more, and then just some completely different product on the side. But the tech guys want to manage it the same way they'd manage anything else. So as a result, Joomla needs to be easier to administrate for technical people, just as an option. It doesn't have to be used that way. And as a result, we have um, rebuilt our command line interface to try and make it much easier, much simpler, and give people more options. There was a full GSOC project on this last year. So yeah, so that is um, a selection of the things that we're doing in Joomla 4. Um, so the question that everybody always wants to know, how bad is it going to be? It's always the thing. So to address this, as far as I'm concerned, the hardest pain point is going to be migrating from Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 4. Um, and that even that depends on what your template's doing. Because effectively, you're migrating two major versions. Um, of course, you're probably still going to need to update your extensions to latest versions if you're not already. But I don't think, um, from an extension developer's perspective, it is going to be particularly hard to do so. Um, if you're not using many of the deprecated functions in Joomla 3, it should be really easy. Um, we are trying to make um, visualizing what extensions are and aren't compatible as easy as we can. And um, the other thing to bear in mind is Joomla 3 is still going to be supported for two years after Joomla 4 comes out. So you also have time. I'm not saying wait until the day before we stop supporting Joomla 3, but also you don't need to um, upgrade immediately. Take your time, plan it. Work out what works for your customers, what doesn't, and then click the button. They're both going to be around for a while. And just to give you an idea, this is the kind of thing we're looking at for. Uh, this will be built into Joomla Update from 3.10. So this looks at um, what um, kind of system requirements you have, your third party extensions, and uh, any recommended settings. That just comes straight out of the installer. So you should be able to see in a glance what is and isn't compatible with Joomla 4 before you hit the button. So um, the last thing I'm going to talk about quickly is actually, actually looking beyond Joomla 4.0, because 4.0 is just a release. It's a big release, but it's still a release. There is still going to be a Joomla community happening after that, and we need to start thinking about what happens afterwards. So looking beyond Joomla 4.0, we've started to look build this year's Google Summer of Code projects on trying to thinking about features that are going to be in 4.1, 4.2. And 
from there on in. So things we're working on for the Joomla 4.x series. Um, well, we're working across the CMS group on an auto update feature. Uh, David's working on that. Um, we're building a drag and drop um, page builder style thing for um, templates, which will allow you to create custom dynamic temp module positions and that kind of thing. Um, we're working on guidelines to make Joomla extensions AA compliant because if your website backend is AA compliant, it's only as good as the extensions you're installing within it. And also working on core supported extensions for SEO, for um, Google Analytics, um, JSON-RD data, that kind of thing. Of course, these are all ideas. I don't guarantee they're going to get merged into the final product, but these are things that we are actively talking about and working on ideas for right now. So um, with that being said, um, our volunteers are the kind of bedrock of Joomla. Um, and as with all good projects, um, we always need volunteers to help us finish. So as always, I will put out a call for people who are willing to help get Joomla 4 over the line and who want to help Joomla in the future. Um, we need people in all sorts of areas, uh, from documentation to unit tests to marketing, working on various bits of code in Joomla, all these things. Like Joomla always needs more contributors. So if you are willing and able, please come up and approach someone from a team, contact people on the volunteers portal, anything. It is always appreciated. So yeah, and with that being said, Joomla 4 is coming soon. Um, thank you very much, and are there any questions? <laughs> Question at the back. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Um, we are currently trying to make things work for a release at Joomla World Conference in November this year. Um, I don't guarantee anything, but that's the current target. Yeah, I know. Anybody else? Nothing at all? Okay. <laughs>